You know, I've heard this quite a few times from the Trump administration and from the Liberal Party here in Australia. They say that renewable energy is killing jobs, but actually it's the exact opposite that's happening. Renewable energy is going to supercharge regional construction. We're talking about thousands of jobs in places where jobs are often very hard to create. The same thing is happening in the West, outside of Australia, in Europe, in the United States, in many countries around the world. Jobs are actually increasing as a result of the shutdown of fossil fuels or the movement away from fossil fuels to renewables. Here are the numbers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. New data from industry research company Macro Monitor shows construction activity in Australia's regional areas driven mainly by renewable energy projects is growing twice as much as activity in metropolitan centres and will continue to do so over the next two years. Sydney-based Macro Monitor is forecasting the rollout of renewables will push construction activity in Australia's regional areas up by $23 billion, that's US $15 billion, or around 19% between 2024-25 and 26-27, well ahead of the $12 billion or 7% increase for forecast for capital cities. So you can see here though, whether you're in a regional area or in a city, the investment going into renewables is increasing jobs all across the country. So jobs will increase, or at least construction will increase, work will increase by around 20% in, in, in regional areas, and in cities by around 7%. Those are positive numbers. And the thing to keep the thing that I think about it is, you know, a lot of what we burn here in Australia, particularly gasoline and diesel, we import that. Yeah? But when we do this, when we build out renewables, we don't import all this energy from other places and get it shipped all the way over to us. We basically generate our own energy. The explosion of wind, solar, pumped hydro, energy storage and transmission will supercharge construction activity in Australia regions, in Australian regions over the next two years, said Macro Monitor Director Nigel Hatcher. Renewable energy in Australia's biggest growth is Australia's biggest growth area of construction and projects are generally located outside capital cities. A record 4.4 gigawatt of new solar, wind and storage capacity was commissioned across the national electricity market last financial year. This year, the number is much higher. The Australian energy market operator anticipates that figure will be eclipsed in coming years, forecasting between 5.2 gigawatts and 10.1 gigawatts of new renewable energy generation and storage capacity to come online annually from now until the end of the decade, as the nation's coal-fired power plants shut down. PV Magazine Australia says that this pipeline of solar, wind, battery and transmission projects will drive construction activity in the region, but the effects will extend beyond the projects themselves. Key drivers in the regions will be house building, roads, railways and minerals, he said. So actually, it could be worth considering investing in some of these regional areas if you're a property investor. Key growth regions include central Queensland and the New England and northwest areas of New South Wales, all of which have become targets for solar and battery energy storage developers. In other words, lots of big batteries being built out, particularly in areas such as former coal power plants or even existing coal power plants where what's going to happen is those coal power plants will shut down and be replaced with enormous batteries. The latest update from Macro Monitor follows the release earlier this year of its Renewable Energy Construction Outlook Australia report that forecasts spending on building renewable energy infrastructure is on track to peak at more than $36 billion in the year 27-28, having already surged by 74% in the past four years from $13.8 billion in 2020 to $24 billion in 2024. Thanks for watching. Home solar and home battery prices have hit record lows in both the United States and in Australia. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If we factor in inflation over the past five years, the truth is 
home solar systems have gone down by more than 60%. Now, if you include, if you include as well as that, the improvements in efficiency, I mean, solar panel efficiency now has increased significantly versus where it was at five years ago. Longevity as well. Solar panel manufacturers now are offering 25-year and some cases 30-year warranties on their panels. If you put all that together, solar is incredibly cheap in both the United States and in Australia, and in fact, in pretty much every country in the world. However, if you've been holding off on going solar, I just had a conversation with uh, a, a friend from this local swimming club, and I said, mate, you've got to get solar. You, you're crazy not to get solar. It is, it is the only logical conclusion, unless you like spending money, unless you like, sorry, I should say, unless you like wasting money. According to Energy Sage's new solar and storage marketplace report in the United States, prices for both home solar and solar plus a battery reached record lows in the second half of 2024. Energy Sage, an online solar shopping marketplace, analyzed millions of quotes from installers across the US in its 20th semi annual report. The data covers January through December 2024 and shows a detailed look at what homeowners pay for solar panels, batteries, inverters, and more. The median price for solar only systems dropped to $2.65 per watt. This is in the United States in the second half of 2024, down from $2.80 per watt earlier in the year. That's the lowest price Energy Sage has ever recorded. And what this means is that battery back systems as well as solar are now the cheapest they've ever been. Battery systems saw an even bigger price drop. That means that solar plus storage quotes in the US fell from $2.59 per watt in the first half of the year to $2.40 per watt in the second half of the year. That's a big difference. Tesla's Powerwall 3 is, well, it's playing a pretty big uh, part in this. The new version has an integrated inverter, so you're saving money by not having to buy an inverter, which shifts some of the costs from the solar quote, measured in dollars per watt, to the storage quote, measured in dollars per kilowatt hour. Now, when it all comes down to it, the truth is that um, the cost of batteries, home batteries, has gone down as well. These falling prices were driven by a variety of things. I mean, obviously, you guys know battery cell prices have come down in the last two years by 50%, approximately 50%, battery cell prices. A lot of that's driven by things like mass mass manufacturing of lots of batteries. Of course, the more you make, the cheaper they are to manufacture, the, the declining cost of lithium. But overall, equipment costs have dropped. Wood McKenzie says that residential solar panel prices were down 30% year over year. 